time today as you find your space where you're going to be for these next few minutes just allow yourself to get comfortable allow your eyes to gently close and pull yourself away from the distractions not just the distractions from the room or the place where you are but the distractions of the day and of the week and the weekend and just the busyness of life and so as the body gets comfortable let that represent the space of familiarity, of feeling safe and secure and at home where you are. And let the eyes being closed represent, I'm gonna spend this time with me. I'm gonna turn my focus inward. And the rest of the world can wait, knowing that as I rejoin my normal activity after these few minutes, the peace and the calm and the clarity and the grounding that I find across these minutes will make my ability to rejoin the activity sweeter. It'll make the colors richer. It'll make the experiences more vibrant. All because of how we shift our perspective across these minutes that we share. And so as we've settled, to start to notice your breath, what does it feel like here in this moment in this space? And if it feels like it's a good pace and it's nurturing you as you need it to, then continue to breathe just like that. If you need for it to slow down, for those inhales to be just a little longer, and those exhales to be just a little fuller, then slow it down. But just realize you set the tempo for your practice. The same way you set the tempo for a physical yoga practice. It's your practice. And so we've been on this journey asking this question. We've asked it many times before together. We've asked it often in the last several days. But this question of who am I? in really looking at this idea of not just who am I, but who am I not? What layers has the world placed on me that I want to just let go? To strip all those pieces away until the core, the essence of me shines through. And so along that same thought, along that same path, I would like our minutes that we have together today to be focused on these things for just a bit that are keeping us from feeling free and liberated. Because the goal of this practice, if you want to assign a goal to it, is that we begin to experience this level of freedom. We don't feel bound by the past or we don't feel restricted by our own thought patterns. We don't feel kind of held captive by other people's expectations on our time, expectations on our life. This practice doesn't remove us from the everyday world. It teaches us how to be a part of it in a way that is healthy and freeing at the same time. And so what I want to invite us to do just across these next couple of minutes as we sit in quiet to really begin our time is just ask yourself, do I truly feel free? Do I feel a sense of liberation within me? Or do I feel kind of held down by the past? or held down by the, the current burdens or the current sufferings that you're experiencing, or held down by the thoughts that you have about yourself, about your mistakes, about your flaws, about your shortcomings. For some of us, maybe we feel kind of held down by another person or a relationship. And so with that question of, do I truly feel 
free. I know within our culture, within our political system, there's this essence of freedom, but I'm talking about deeper. In the core of your being, the deepest part of your soul, do you feel completely free and liberated? Or do you still feel like there's some heaviness that's getting in the way? It's getting in the way of you truly being who you are meant to be. Or it's getting in the way of you first understanding your deepest heart's desire and then acting on it. Or maybe it's getting in the way of you having clarity about your purpose, about your unique and beautiful contribution to the world. And so let's just pause here and ask the question, what's in the way of me feeling free? and liberated. Let's just sit with the question, sit with the awareness, and see just what comes across your mind. Our meditation practice is not meant to create a laundry list of the things that are wrong, but it is a practice of creating this really acute awareness of knowing ourselves so well, of understanding our thought patterns, understanding all the dark spaces that maybe we've tried to avoid in the past. This awareness helps us know what's in the way. The practice doesn't ask us to be naive or to put on these, these glasses that have this rose-colored lens and just go about life doing the very best that we can. But rather, this practice encourages us and nurtures us into being people who are liberated from self-doubt, who are free from unhealthy relationships, who are no longer held or strapped down or burdened by the way that you used to think about yourself. And for some of you that used to is a long time ago and some of you it's that used to is just minutes before now. But here in this moment, I encourage us to foster and nurture this freedom and whatever things came across each of our minds, that's our awareness. And it doesn't mean that tomorrow we're going to go out and we're going to just sever relationships or quit certain things or stop. It means that we are going to rank, we are going to maintain awareness so that those things influence over us begins to lessen. Because it's when we are not aware that they tend to just creep in little by little, by little, they start to have a foothold in our life and then all of a sudden, they've taken over. But our best weapon against that is our awareness. We each know our areas where we struggle. And I will tell you, those things still come up for me. But the influence that they used to have over my life is far, far less now than it used to be. It's not perfect. I'm not cured. But I am so much closer to this idea of full freedom and liberation within me so that I can live out my purpose with clarity, with confidence, with peace. 
And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to offer us a mantra that we can take into this week. Because just having the awareness may not be enough of a tool for us. Maybe we need something a little more concrete. And I love the sound of the mantra, the sound of the vibration of the Sanskrit word for liberation. And as I share it with you, I'm going to repeat it a few times with this firm, determined voice. And then my voice will grow quieter and I'll whisper it. And then I'll just stop talking all together. And we'll let the vibration of that mantra just resonate within. So that as we do rejoin our normal activity and that really negative mindset starts to trip us up or our self-doubt starts to bubble up or that person starts to poke, we'll have this mantra within that we can begin to repeat again and again and again until eventually we believe that it's true that we truly have manifested and realized freedom and liberation in our life from the things that have been holding us down for far too long. And so the word in Sanskrit is moksha. Moksha. And when you translate it, sometimes you'll see freedom as the first translation. Sometimes you'll see liberation. I don't think it matters which one connects better for you. Because the idea of both is there's nothing else holding you down. Your light in your spirit, the heaviness within your being has begun to disappear. And you're experiencing moksha. So let's keep our bodies comfortable. Let's keep our breath steady. I'll share the mantra I'll say it for us. You can repeat it or you can just allow my repetitions to hold space for all of us. And then I'll grow quiet. And we'll just let the vibration of the mantra of this freedom, this liberation, continue to resonate within. Moksha. 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 As we continue to breathe together and hold space for one another. When I think about this idea of moksha, freedom, liberation, I always get this visual of this set of doors right there in front of my soul. And I know that when those doors begin to open, 
the light of my soul is allowed to shine with nothing getting in the way, nothing clouding it. But oftentimes it's not the doors at our soul that are being kept closed. It's the door around our heart, the door around our mind. And so just picture for yourself, you've got this set of doors right there at heart center and the emotional things that we've experienced, the way that we've been hurt, the suffering that we've had from our own actions or from the actions of others tends to keep that door at your heart closed firmly. But as you become aware of those things, their influence over your life and over your ability to open that door to your heart becomes less and less and less. And then there's that door across your mind and sometimes we're much more forgiving of the, the door that's been kept closed at our heart than we are the one over the mind because those thought patterns run deep. And those things that we've told ourselves about ourselves, we've convinced ourselves that they're true. We've kept a laundry list of failures and shortcomings and disappointments. And we hold our freedom hostage by allowing those things to keep that door locked closed. But as you kept in your mind across these minutes, the things that truly are the barriers and you're finding awareness about them, your door is beginning to creep open little by little by little. Oftentimes, what keeps the heart closed is from the actions of others. What keeps the mind closed are the thoughts that are ours. Now, I will tell you that the moksha, the freedom, the liberation that you can experience deep in your soul, it's worth letting go of those things so your doors can stay open. The past will stay in the past. The suffering you've already lived through will be done. And you will experience freedom and liberation, understanding who you are, what your purpose is, living out your heart's desire, your contribution to the world every single day. So as we prepare to close our time, I wish for you moments filled with moksha, saying it to yourself again and again until you believe that you deserve it. And then believe that it's accessible to you as much as it's accessible to me. Namaste.